Move the, I mean, I'll put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Opposed, that's carried. Thank you. And on that note, I'll hand back to, and hang in there, this is challenging. I'll hand back to the Mayor to introduce his report. Okay, thank you, Pauline, for looking after that for me this morning. Okay, Mayor's report. I've got, um, it, it's changed a little bit. It's, it's got a little bit more in it than what it has had in the past. Um, just to say what I have done, what I am doing, just to give everyone a bit more clarity so, it's, uh, so I'm not sitting around here just breathing oxygen. <laughs> 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 Thank you for your vote of support. <laughs> right. Um, uh, yeah. So it, it, it's there. If there's any questions, one thing I will say that uh, I've been away with um, Jake and uh, Victoria for just over two weeks to China, which was extremely busy. Um, we went to Shenzhen, Wuhan, Beijing, Ho Hot, Gansu, and all the way up to where um, Ri Wieli is buried. So that was an extremely, um, his, his um, it, was, it was very, very good to go there. Um, so while I was away, um, Pauline did local water done well, which is very good. <laughs> she actually had a lot of exciting things to do and I wasn't actually <laughs> missing it, to be honest. <laughs> um, we're also looking forward to getting stuck into city deals. There is a little bit of work happening already. On that, um, and in the report is the list of upcoming engagements um, coming forward. Um, I've had um, <laughs> the One New Zealand Stadium um, naming, and Chris Pink and Simon Bridges, and went and had a breakfast with Mayor Wayne Brown while I was up there with Simon Bridges. So that was uh, exciting on the side of the road at a cafe. Um, went to uh, Lancaster Park and did a whole lot of native planting there, which was introducing all the new people from the um, in-house team that, that Parks and Reserves had brought in, and it was a very good team-building morning. They had a um, hell of a lot of plants. Mary and I did a few laps on the new lawnmowers they've got, and I did, <laughs> and I did some donuts on the grass. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and then we, uh, I, the... The community beat team announcement for the for the police. They had eight, eight and they're getting ten more in, so that's that's working well. Uh, went out to the record and races for Red Nose Day with Will Hall uh, for um, cancer awareness. Um, and the, yeah, there's all you'll see it in there. There's all sorts of things. Uh, one thing I went to Cashmere High, and I'll share this with you. It was uh, get their six and seventh formers in there because I'm older, twelve and thirteen year um, year thirteen and twelve. Um, and they wanted me to go out there and talk to them about leadership. God knows why, but they did. <laughs> and one thing I said was... They have all been successfully expelled. Yeah, one thing I said... <laughs> 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 they all came in during the holidays, so it was good. It was a hell of a lot of them. It was good. And uh, one thing I said to them, I said, right, if you guys think you're going to waltz out of here and get a job for 150 grand a year as soon as you walk out the door, get ready for disappointment. And and the teachers down the back said, thank you so much for telling them this sort of stuff because that, they needed to hear that sort of thing. And I said, the other thing I said was, if you get a good job and you're enjoying it and you have a hard night on the Sunday night, still go to work. Don't just ring up and say, I can't be bothered today because that won't get you any... Um, promotions and stuff going forward. You've got to be there and do it. So don't shirk off. And so Thanks so much for the residual staff on the system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, um, words, <laughs> <laughs> so, no, it was good. We met a hell of, and you'll see the list there, uh, the people we met in uh, China. One of the things that stood in my mind was Shenzhen 40 to 45 years ago had 30,000 people in it. Now it's got 16 million people. The, the, uh, yeah. So they had, what was the um, saying, Victoria? Money, time is money and efficiency is life. So we're writing the memo as we speak. So we, the, the, way that, the way that they, they get so much go forward stuff and get things done is phenomenal. Driving, going around on a um, 
fast train at 350 kilometres an hour and meeting all these people, the, 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 the productivity he can do by moving around the country so quick is phenomenal. So it was a great trip, and once again, I, I thank um, Pauline for holding the fort while we were away. So if there's any questions, I'll answer them. They were very well behaved. By oh, thank you very much, yes. Kelly. Um, yeah, thanks, Phil. Did you see any innovations over there that you thought, gosh, we could do with something like that in Christchurch? Was one, one of the couple of things. Uh, one of the things we went to, um, and you will see the photo somewhere along the line, we went out to, uh, in Shenzhen, they do a lot of wetlands to, to um, treat their water before it goes into the river, and it was 44 degrees and you would swear I was at a wet t-shirt competition. It, the what the, just dripping off you. It, the, the humidity is unbelievable. So I went there, that was good. Another one we went to was where in the middle of, I think it was Wuhan, it used to be a landfill and there was photos of the compactors right in the middle of town building big mounds of rubbish. They've turned it all into a reserve and that's where we planted that tree. Um, and how they've transferred that around is, is unbelievable. Shenzhen, because it's so young, there's so many tech companies. One scary thing was they put a microphone on all of us at one time or another, and you talk for 30 seconds, <clears throat> and then, then it just does an AI copy of you, and it goes, oh, hi, my name's Phil Major, I'm the Mayor of Christchurch, yada, 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 for 15 seconds, and then it goes straight into Mandarin, and my, my mouth moves exactly to the way the Mandarin comes out of my mouth. It, it's actually... It's very clever, but it's also a bit scary. So there's... that might help us for understanding you here. Yeah. <laughs> thank, you, thank you very much. <laughs> but but it, the, there was we went and saw autonomous vehicles. We saw um, um, trackless trams. A few of those around the place. So it, it was it was very well worth it. And the main thing was that you can do all this stuff with emails, or you can do it online and Zoom and stuff like that. But you cannot beat the face to face stuff. And to actually see at, at where um, Riwi Alley is um, buried, they've got a whole museum there, three-story museum with photos and stuff all around it. It's actually, it's actually a bit sad. I feel a bit sad or that we don't respect Riwi Alley here, who was only went to school at Boys High and was born in um, Springfield. They, they, they treasure him. They really do. And... Uh, a lot of people here don't know diddly dot about it. So we need to push that a little bit more, whether we can get half of their um, photographs and stuff like that and the story of Riwi Alley and put it at either the Art Centre or the Art Gallery or something like that, because it, it, it's very good. I think it's worth mentioning that in the Riwi Alley Museum, there's a big section on promotion of Christchurch. Amazing uh, up-to-date photos yeah. and promotional opportunities for Christchurch. I've, I've captured all of yes. that, so I'll be happy yes. to share that. And, and they're, they're mad keen on um, doing student exchange. And one of the, the good things about it is, as I said over there, from um, Guangzhou to Christchurch, direct flights coming in. Um, but there's some talk about going straight from Beijing to Christchurch as well. So it's it's all it's, it's good, because we can... Um, send our students over there, they can send our students here, so it's, uh, it's excellent. Yeah, can I just add that one of the other outcomes as well was uh, some conversations around the Chinese garden. We've got, we're going to develop the Chinese garden out at Halls Wall Quarry and we saw a fabulous uh, design of what they'd like to do with that garden and we managed to come away with an agreement for them to uh, fund that as well. Mm -hmm. And there are a couple of other exchanges that they're prepared to help fund in agricultural and cultural exchanges. Yeah. So yeah. we certainly didn't come away empty-handed. So, so we'll look after the concrete foundations. They'll build the thing over there, pull it apart, put it in some containers and send it over here and possibly send some people over here to build it. Like the, there's a Japanese one there as well. Sim similar, very similar. Now that we've got you in, through AI in Mandarin, is it your voiceover that's going to be promoting Christchurch at the museum over there? or Because that may not be a positive, just saying. <laughs> 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 One thing I did do, and um, we, we had a few, in, and to the people down the back, Tina... Uh, we, did, we didn't just go over there and eat dinner every day, but at one particular um, dinner we went to, um, like I'm talking the table is about, it's got to be 15 metres across. It's massive. It is, or 10, 10 metres easy, circular. And the guy came in and started doing the noodles, how they make the noodles. So I had a go at that. So 
So they they put they put that on their television over there of me making noodles in, in China. Oh, so. <laughs> okay. So all those in favour? Aye. All those against? Thank you. That's carried. Right. <laughs> I could have gone on for hours. <laughs> <laughs> so it was good. So righto, now we'll move up to uh, Takaha Streets, please. Are you... Okay. I'll second, Sam will move the staff rec, I'll second the staff rec, but there might be a wee change floating around. Yeah. Just signalling a foreshadow. Um, Is that Andrew? Thank you. Kia ora koutou. Um, so this morning we're bringing you a report on the construction sequencing and a proposal for the construction sequencing for the Takaha Street Works. Um, I am going to introduce beside me, I've got Jenny Rankin, who's the project manager, and beside her is Dan Lucas. Dan works with uh, for Lucas Haining um, and is, is working as part of the Isaacs team who've won the construction work, and he's here to discuss a little bit about the construction programming that they've planned and why they've planned it, and here to answer your questions if needed. Um, there are elements of this report that are in PX. If we need to, we will have to um, discuss those at that time. The, uh, I also just want to take a quick minute to remind all the councillors that staff are, are coming back uh, and have committed to coming back in September to discuss the outcomes of the publication of the NLTP programme from NZTA and at that point we'll be talking about the entire transport programme but there will be discussions around options moving forward and we are also have also committed to coming back in October, November, um, regarding options for the next stages of work on this um, package. Jenny will, Jenny's got a really short presentation, three or four slides to talk through, and there's one at the end around the sort of timeline over the next few months that'll help. So I'll pass over to you, Jenny. No worries. Um, just try and get you to the first slide. There we go. Um, so about a month ago, we awarded Isaac's Construction with... Um, the package of work which includes the three waters um, or two waters um, upgrades as well as the transport works but the um, two waters works we um, kind of approved for construction almost immediately so that was awarded and they have been on the ground now for a couple of weeks doing first potholing and servicing and now they're actually in the ground I think up to date 600 meters of pipe has been installed in that upgrade so um, we have awarded that portion of the work straight away. What we have not done is awarded um, uh, for delivery um, and progressed with is that transport portion of the works. And that is due to that NZTA um, decision not coming through in time. But what we have done is um, we've awarded it on a provisional and separable portion basis to Isaac's construction on the understanding that um, we have a price and we have a, a program that we can work to should um, that NZTA funding decision be made. But what we're coming, um, we if we just go to the next slide. All right. Um, so this kind of illustrates what we're in at the moment in terms of um, those that pipe renewal. But what we, um, if we go to the next slide, <laughs> Uh, coming to you today is to discuss how we proceed with that transport work. So at the moment, um, ISIS Construction are working on this program where they've got three crews around um, the stadium um, getting those pipes underground um, underway. But what we really need to do is maximise on some efficiency and um, going one pass past some of those key stakeholders and that area just to try and minimise our disruption and um, to um, get value for money um, across this contract. So what we've proposed to you today is to um, proceed with a small portion of the transport works on the immediately surrounding streets. Um, so that's called separable portion two, which you'll see highlighted there. So that is um, the areas in red, which are basically the areas immediately adjacent to the arena and a portion of Litchfield Street between Manchester and Madras Street. 
Um, so if we skip to the next slide, um, the reason why we are proposing this is that we really want to maximize on that construction efficiency. So um, we want to be right in there with that three water work, ensuring that we're going over it in one pass as, as much as possible. Um, this will minimize our disruption to our neighboring businesses and property owners. Um, and it will ensure that we are finished in time for the opening of the stadium. So if we were to delay all that transport work until um, the NZTA decision, then we would potentially come at risk of not meeting that deadline and we would be causing more disruption for longer to those neighbouring um, areas. And one of the key things that we need to do is um, to tie in those street levels with that new stadium. Um, we have um, existing stormwater concerns in the area um, on the road that um, we need to address um, in that tie in with that new stadium level. So um, ideally we need to proceed with those stormwater related connections and levels um, now in order to achieve that delivery um, ahead of this uh, stadium's opening. Um, so I'll just go to the next slide. Um, so this is where we are in terms of the next steps. So obviously we're coming to you today. Um, should you say yes to us proceeding um, today with some of that transport work, we'd look to commence in the next few days on some of that transport stuff. And that's really around that stormwater um, tie-ins that we can achieve immediately. Um, we'd then um, hope to get that NZTA decision out in October and we'd come back to a report to you in November around what that decision was that they came back with and what our next steps would be um, in terms of you making them for us to proceed on the, the remainder of the separable portion three elements that was in that diagram. We'll so that's options. those, yeah, we'll come back with some options around that, what that would mean for the remainder of the package of the transport works. So really we've got um, until December really for a, a go, no go decision on that in terms of potential impact on us delivering this ahead of the opening of Takaha. So, um, we're really um, in a now a tight time frame to deliver um, these works ahead of the opening. So we're really on a push of needing to know now where we go in terms of what we're delivering into ensuring basically when the arena is opening that we're not there constructing at the same time as 30,000 people are coming to the first event. Yep. So, um, yeah, we... So Dan can like... probably talk you through maybe some of the... Um... Yeah, maybe easiest to go back to the previous slide. Uh, just with a graphic there. So uh, this is an example of Litchfield Street that has a sewer, water and stormwater installation underneath the road and then progressively build up and, and finish the carriageway on top. So if we can do the work efficiently and, and one after another in a, in a traditional one-pass approach, that allows us to essentially extend the trenches each time wider and wider. If we weren't to continue on with the next task, we need to fill that trench right up, surface it, potentially go away and then come back if a transport decision was made later to then dig it up again. Um, so we are pretty driven to be running a flexible program. So coming inside the central city, we've always needed to um, account for the number of different stakeholders that are around and we are pretty dynamic in that space. And we've kind of shown it already with the award of just the two waters that has changed our program around a bit. But we do get to a point where we've got that sort of clinch point that is sort of a no or, you know, no or go. Um, which is probably where we are today. We're, we've been installing pipe for uh, eight days now, and we're actually about four days ahead of the program. Um, so that's with the 600 metres of pipe we've already got in. So that's where we're, the crews out there are literally waiting at the moment to understand, do we backfill this trench right up, or do we move over one to start installing the next pipe? Questions? Anyone? Aaron, then Jake? Then me? Yeah, so just on the backfilling the trenches, uh, if we're waiting till later in the year for a transport decision, can't we just run AP40 up to the surface, compact it and leave it? Um, the volume of traffic on the roads um, is a bit of an issue. So if we backfill that trench, we obviously then want to remove the traffic management. If we were to leave sort of gravel filled up in those <coughs> trenches and expose the volume of traffic that does work on um, Barbados and Madras Street, it'll, it'll fall to bits pretty quickly. So it's so not it's really not doable? Not. We can, we can temporary surface, uh, but which we'd then be removing again should the decision be made. Right. Okay. Dan, one, one of the questions I've got is why uh, does this stuff, and Brent probably answered this question, 
The stuff in Litchfield Street, the pipe work, has to happen for the outfall of what's happening around the rest of it. You, you can't say, no, nah, not don't have to do that bit because it has to. That's correct. And we, yeah, we've already, uh, when this was discussed last time at Council, uh, that and the age of the asset, it's, it's the opportunity to do it now um, to avoid disruption later on as well. Yeah, but if, if, if we do, because I imagine, Dan, and, and I'm right with you here, you need to be get, getting going now because you've got the summer construction period that you can work all the hours that God gives you to get stuff done quickly rather than hosing down with water. But if Litchfield Street bit was not done because it's part of the, the dotted line bit, um, does the stormwater have to be done under it now? Say we said we didn't want to do Litchfield Street at all, or are you already in there? We're in there installing water and sewer at the moment. Right, as we speak. Okay. <coughs> so it, it, what I'm getting at is we need to decide whether we want to spend the money on Litchfield Street now and finish it, or whether we just want to patch it over at the top, isn't it? That's but you've still got one shed load of work to do on all the other four, three streets around the... Yeah, so um, the, the general approach we take is when, when we turn up and we put a, a famous road cones on the road, um, we, we bring disruption. Um, and it's a really balance of, of disruption versus duration. So given that we're there and making a disruption anyway, our preference is to probably add to that disruption but be gone sooner down the line. So you saw on the map that Jenny put up, there's a number of different streets there. They do all plan to finish at different times, uh, and that is why we are hitting all of those areas at once, is to essentially treat each street as its own project, um, assign its own resource to it, its own management, hit it hard and, and get out as fast as we can. Mm -hmm. Just a question for you, Lynette. It's on there where it says uh, separable portion three from Chum back to Morehouse. That's on the sort of the... Back burner at the moment, the way I'm getting at it. Were, were we going to do Litchfield and Chewham as well? Were they part of it as well? Yep. yep. So yes, that, they were always part of it. And that, there's, yep. there's some works at Fitzgerald Ave that were part of it at, with signals and things like that to assist coaches. And so there was a lot of traffic management work that was done, uh, some ch tweaks and changes, but it's not to the same, those streets are not to the same extent no. as Litchfield Street on the other side. Okay. There's probably a, a relevant point because we're making disruption on Madras and Barbados. Um, Fitzgerald becomes really critical for across traffic, uh, cross city traffic movements. So yeah. we need to complete the work on Barbados and Madras anyway before yes. we can go out and mess around with the lights yes. on so Fitzgerald. Litchfield, Chewham, and Madras, the down to Morehouse is the, that's the number three. Don't worry about that yet at all. That's the one we would come back with in the, in the next report got, with options, if we got knowing what the decisions is. Yep. Okay. Uh, yep. Jake, sorry, did you have a question, mate? I hit, hit your hand up somewhere. It's AI, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Sorry, hard to find the button. Uh, yeah, I'll start speaking Mandarin um, shortly. <laughs> no, um, just I'm having a hard time following the logic of... Um, why we would proceed with um, the non-critical option to transport stuff, but not the 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 five million dollar um, remainder. But surely both are reliant on subsidy, probably to a similar degree. Is that accurate, or have I got something wrong? Um, yep. So effectively, um, what we've done is I, we have to be quite careful how, how I talk to this um, being not non PX. Um, is when we apply to NZTA for our subsidy, um, we apply on the basis that some of the elements of that package can be subsidised, um, and there is a value of that that we have applied for uh, being 11 million. So the, the work we're asking you to proceed to does not exceed the value of what we would... Um, oh, I see. Of, it doesn't exceed... It, it's approximately the value... It doesn't exceed the value of what we've assumed in our assumptions. That's what right, so okay. Okay. we probably so need to have that conversation in peace. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would be clearer. So, so roughly okay. speaking, I think I've actually got enough from so that answer clear. anyway. Yeah, so we, we've tried to balance this um, to minimise your financial risk, the financial risk to council. So that's what the options are about. We, we've also informed that through overlapping it with our construction program, and what we're saying is those orange areas don't actually need to start before October or November when that decision would be made. 
but it wouldn't be the end of the world to you guys if it never Ooh. happened at all for years. We'd love to do the work. I'm sure. I'm sure you would. <laughs> <laughs> but but if, if if we haven't got the money, what what I think I'm, I'm understanding it's, is we, we you've condensed it down to the bit that, of the money that we've rated for and got on budget, except the bit that we may get from NZTA. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Melon. Uh, uh, so with the separable portion three, um, if we make that decision sooner, does that mean that work will proceed faster? Um, certainly on the Morehouse to Chewham section on Madras Street. Um, like I said, we can't actually go on to Fitzgerald until we're off Barbados and Madras. Yeah. Uh, but what we're essentially doing at the moment is when we created our, our construction programme, each street was programmed in its own manner and each had a bit of float uh, at the end of the programme to take us out to that sort of October um, drop dead date that we've got. What we're doing at the moment is essentially eating into that float so things start to become pretty tight on paper, but they do still work. Right, and then right. if we leave it, uh, just to be clear, the separable portion three, it would still, that work would happen before the stadium opens. That's correct. That's yeah, where that's the drop dead date comes in. Go, if, if, if you go to the next slide, in, um, in December, we would need to know um, what the status of that is before it starts impacting on their ability to deliver ahead of their stadium's opening. So we, we need to know that before Christmas. That's what the drop dead date is. That was on that last slide. Okay, if you can put it up, please. Mm -hmm. Aaron, please. Two quick questions. Back to the diagram the um, of the layers. Yeah, that one there. It finishes at the bottom end uh, with pavers, um, or is this just an? A that's the example of Litchfield Street. Right. That's. Are we putting pavers there? Because the previous report we had said we're swapping out pavers for stamped concrete in some areas. Yes. And so that's an, obviously a diagram diagram of. Um, so there's some what pavers across um, Litchfield Street. Not all of it will be pavers, but there is a still pavers across Litchfield Street. That's around um, that look of um, getting that speed environment a little slower, but it will still be um, asphalt in there as well. But um, there are kind of threshold treatments with pavers. Right, and we do that rather than the stamped concrete? <coughs> Just that the previous report said we're going to stamp concrete in some areas. Uh -huh. So I thought, oh, I'd, I, can't, when I, saw that I, I can't recall that stamped concrete. concrete. We'll come back on right. the stamped concrete. Yeah, yeah, just, yep. just yep. I don't know, yep. might have just been overlooked. And then the other one is um, the delivery speed, because this work, obviously, like you say, we're down to one lane in two directions and from four in some spots, so it creates a lot of um, inconvenience and congestion. Um, and the guys working on the stadium are there seven days a week. Uh, is the road construction going to be more than 42 hours a week? Uh, so we're currently averaging about 52 hours a week for okay. each employee, um, yeah. but we also have uh, an, a large number of residential properties around. So right. our contract currently reads that we can work till lunchtime on Saturday, um, and beyond that we need to make a special request to work, and that I think most of that is around the, the noise thresholds of the district plan. Um, so just we... to get it in the public domain here, um, is one of the hold-ups of that, the permission thing, not the availability of workers and that? Because we often get the public say, why don't you go and go hard, even do 12-hour days, 24-hour days, all that kind of thing, and just whack it out and then the road flows? There's, there's no issue with um, worker availability. And there's a bit more complexity to the programming because obviously yep. our staff still need uh, a break at weekend. And safety. Yes, so we end up with a is. kind of a double shift pattern where a team are on this five days and this five days. So right. it's about having enough work in front of them that they don't That's turn more, up. And it's permission rather than availability. Yes, yep. Cool. That's very interesting for us to know as a council. In, commu in community, I'd just like to add to that, in community impact, especially working in residential areas. Yeah, they so differ. Half of them want it done really fast, that live next door to it, and others want it only done for three hours a day. Are they going to move it? Yeah, they're going to move it in the next little... Okay, so <laughs> what am I doing, Mary? So Pauline and Jake have... Uh, Oh, there it is. Uh, moved and seconded a motion. Is it Pauline and Jake or Pauline and Tim? And oh. then uh, Sam's prepared to just put it into the full motion. That's right. Yeah. It's in the principle yeah. agreement to, yeah, you have you that, Sam? to indicate okay. that we can. So are we happy with what we all see here, ladies and gentlemen? We can roll in there and we don't need to vote on it separately. No. That's correct. Do you have to roll it in? Yep. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy to roll it in. Okay. So put it. 
Sorry, can I ask? Can I have my question? Can I ask my questions? Oh, sorry, Yanni, I didn't see your hand there, mate. Uh, yeah. Um, do we do we have any understanding of when that NLTP program will be released? Yes. What what date? So as I said at the start, it will be um, the NLTP is due to be published in September. That's the whole program, and then um, Waka Kotahi, as we've said before, have said they will come back to an, and I think it's in the report, they they said they will come back to us in October or November on this project in particular. Right, and I mean, given that Chris Luxon's asked councils to make savings before asking government for handouts, are we, the chances of us getting additional money must be pretty slim. So we're not seeking additional money, we are seeking what we've already sought, and okay. basically they've put our application on hold until the um, NLTP came out. Right. So they have our business case, they have received okay. it, they have assured us that they have received all the evidence and supporting documentation they need, they just won't make the decision on that um, right. until they right. have... The so, so they given deferred the decision until the GPS was finalised. Right. But um, have we looked at, given we know that there's going to be a shortfall funding, not just this, but across the country for transport projects, have we looked at value engineering this in any way to save or reduce costs so that we can continue to proceed if we don't get the government subsidy? Um, that would slow us down a lot. Um, though we, We're working with it. Dan can talk to what they're, they're aiming to do as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So we've not identified, like, despite the fact knowing that government we're going to be... That's part of the identification. Well, that's part of the identification of the separable portions. If you can pop the... Can you flick to the slide? Sorry. The one with the red and yellow lines... That's, that's part of the options, is not to do part of it. That's, that's effectively value engineering. Mm. So that's what we've put up to you. That's what, that's what this report is about, mm. effectively. Ta taking out the brown line, putting the brown lines on hold. But we hold. don't have an option for not tying in with the street levels and not ensuring that the stormwater works. Mm. Yeah, I, I get that. But things like the materials being used, the paving, et cetera, the high-cost elements in the project. So the high-cost the high cost elements in... It's really only Litchfield Street that has high cost elements uh, and, and design, uh, rain gardens, etc. They are in, they are still in separable portion three. So separable portion two gets you up to a trafficable surface. Right. And 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 the preferred option. That's what we're preferred proposing. option. Yeah. Okay. And if if that's the case, then it would seem that the the funding request to NZTA would that be retrospective if we commit to this today? Like. I, they have confirmed that that is not retrospective because we are already in it and they confirmed that they put a hold on the decision and in this instance it is not retrospective and they have confirmed that. So if we make the decision today, right. we proceed yep. ahead of that, then the only subsidy that we're looking at from them will be for option three? No, no to the whole project. The whole project. Right, but how does that time with the retrospective nature? They got all the information that they needed prior to us tendering this work. Okay. They chose, and this is what they advised us, they chose to not make the decision until the GPS was finalised and we are working with Waka Kotahi to sure. keep moving forward. Okay. So, question from me. <clears throat> if NZTA don't come up with the money, Dan will go to a certain point and stop unless we flog some money off another project somewhere else one day. We, um, we will come back with options of how to fund this mm -hmm. in the next report. That's yep. the next. Okay. There so that, will be that, options, and it could include, it could include um, substitution, it could include not delivering some other projects, it correct. could include mm. not doing part of this work. So there's all sorts of options, and we will come back with it. It could be do it because we get the subsidy. Yeah. So while you're sitting there, just take the variation book out of the back of Dan's pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I make sure that it's done really early in the process. Okay. Oh, sorry, Erin, and then we'll put it. Um, and we may have seen this, but I'm not sure, only because it does relate to today. Um, have we ever seen a traffic model? We had the traffic plan of how the list of each, well, the way each person would travel to and from the stadium, but have we seen it working as a model? We had the one where all the little ants go out the thing, but they only get to the footpath, ants and then they disappeared. All the ants were yep. just home safe then. But 
back in um, reality, have we ever so, seen that? So like the model like looks at the city and yeah. they're all going to, and 17,000 will go that way. Yeah, so there was an independent um, transport assessment done, I can't remember the date now, um, a couple of years ago at least, um, which looked at how people would come into the city. And there right. was a diagram presented to you in, um, I think, November 23, which still contained that diagram, I believe, um, around okay. how people... Tra um, were perceived that they would be accessing that, and that forms part. And do we just and do we still think that's accurate? We still believe. I had that. my eight-year-old ask yep. on Saturday, "Where's everyone going to park as we drove past?" Yep. And um, like too. Uh, so they're moving right along. Okay, uh, thank you. I'll, I'm putting it. All those in favour? Aye. 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 Against? No. Right. So that recorded. Yanni, you record. Yanni, please. Okay, that is carried. Excellent. Where you go, Dan? <laughs> Well, given this is our biggest anchor project, we should be seeing what the transport modelling looks like. I think we need to be really confident that when we get open, our first three events aren't a nightmare for people and uh, puts them off. So I just want that confidence because some of the numbers we had in the modelling, uh, like the, the Uber or taxi numbers, seem super low. And, yeah. and are the buses going only to the exchange or are we blocking a lane on the two one-way systems and there'll be 40 buses parked up, which would be my preference, but I want to see all that stuff and have confidence. Yeah, you're right. I would like to see it like we did um, Sail GP, which worked extremely yep. well, and have yep. a car park, say, we'll say at the Hornby Hub or say at yep. Westfield. And I'm happy to say I was wrong on mm. that, that I didn't think it would be as successful mm. as it was. Mm. It worked very well. So I, I'd be keen to see what our thoughts are going for, because that was after that last plan was presented, and I think options like that could be the way forward, but it'll only be a, if it's a door-to-door. -door. Yeah. They won't do it if so they're going to walk three blocks to a bus exchange. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. We have now the Pauline's getting...